Uh, we begin here at six with a stunning change to congestion pricing. Just 25 days before it was set to begin, it has been postponed indefinitely. And the reason, according to Governor Hochul, too many unintended consequences. The plan had been to charge drivers $15 to enter Manhattan below 60th Street. Trucks would be charged up to 36 bucks, motorcycles $7.50, and ride shares around $2 a ride. And it isn't just about money. It was touted as a plan to reduce traffic, decrease pollution, and provide Provide investments to public transit. The license plate readers have already been up for months now waiting to be used. So what happens now? We have team coverage on the details of the pause and what it means going forward. We begin with CBS2 political reporter Marsha Kramer. If there was a sign that said, honk if you don't want congestion pricing to go into effect, Governor Kathy Hochul saw it, heard it, and acted on it. I have directed the MTA to indefinitely pause the program. The governor citing the fragile state of the city's recovery from the pandemic, soaring inflation, and the concern that charging drivers $15 to enter Manhattan's central business district below 60th Street could encourage people to move out of the state. Let's be real. A $15 charge may not seem like a lot to someone who has the means. But it can break the budget of a hard-working or middle-class household. But Catherine Wild, a member of the traffic mobility panel that set the toll rates, insisted that 80% of the people who work in Manhattan don't drive. They take mass transit. A very small number of people are driving to work in Manhattan, and those who are are the relatively well-paid ones who can afford $50 a day for parking. She said she hopes the governor is just pausing the implementation of congestion pricing and not killing it altogether. Congressman Anthony Desposito says he thinks the move is just political, answering a plea from House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries to help Democrats trying to unseat him and other freshman Republicans in Congress. Make no mistake, my personal belief is that Either way this goes in November, uh, Governor Hochul will be full steam ahead uh, with congestion pricing once the election is over. Some commuters agree with Hochul. That's crazy, and it's going to trickle down because it's all these companies that have to like bring goods into the city, so groceries are going to go up. It's very expensive. Anything in Golden City, crazy. Yeah. I don't know what's going on in the world. Some don't. I'm pro congestion pricing. I am. I think it's time. I live on 57th Street, very noisy, lots of cars honking. I'm hoping it'll ease some of the congestion on the bridge. So I'm for it. Now, one unanswered question is how they will find the funds to make much needed improvements to the system. The governor says she's identified some money in the state budget, but she's looking for a new tax or revenue stream. Maurice. Marsha, we've been talking about this, it seems, forever. Michael Bloomberg was the one who brought this up. And I look back 17 years ago that we've been kicking around this idea. Well, I can tell you this that Bloomberg's idea. Um, was a, a no-go for about 10 years. And what happened was that Governor Cuomo began looking at it seriously during the summer of 2017. When things got so bad, he declared a state of emergency on the subways. They were overcrowded, dilapidated, and only 65% of weekday trains were on time. Now, Maurice, it took Governor Cuomo two years to convince the legislature that they should actually do congestion pricing, so he signed it into law in 2019. Wow, and now we're on pause. No idea where this is going next. No idea. Okay, Marcia, thank you. While drivers we talked to are breathing a sigh of relief tonight, people who commute by train have mixed reactions. CBS 2's Jenna DeAngelis live at Penn Station after speaking with people who rely on mass transit to get into the city. Jenna. Well, Maurice, I think one thing is clear. Anytime you bring up congestion pricing to people, it comes with mixed reviews, and that was no different here. We spoke with people going on and off the subways. As you can imagine, many were disappointed, looking forward to that money going toward much-needed improvements to their commute. Here's what some had to say. For it to go to anything that will help out with um, travel and repairs and upkeep, yes. But like I said, I'm all for it for the people who come in from outside of the city. I'm tired of cars bumper to bumper to bumper. We don't get enough trains. Even in the morning time, we don't get enough trains. The fees and the cost of living are already high enough. Find another way to, to fund it. Where are the funds going to come from? That's the question. It sort of feels like uh, election timing, and that worries me. 
And as Marsha addressed, Hochul said the state remains committed to advancing improvements. Money has already, already been set aside to backstop the MTA capital program, and the state is exploring other funding options. But of course, many people will be sitting on the edge of their train seats, if you will, waiting to see, of course, what happens next. We're live in Penn Station. Jenna DeAngelis, CBS 2 News. Okay, Jenna, thank you. And in New Jersey, drivers and lawmakers who were fighting the tolling program are grateful for this break. For many drivers, congestion pricing could have cost them as much as 30 bucks a day, including easy pass tolls. Stopping the plan was one thing state Republicans and Democrats could agree upon. Do everything we can to um, expand mass transit, but also the idea for, for families and people who have no choice but to commute. I think New York realized that they took on a fight that was going to be a serious fight. A lot of us commute to New York. We do a lot of business there. Uh, we were already getting hammered with all the uh, toll price raises. Governor Murphy thanked Governor Hochul for the decision and vowed to work with New York to invest in transportation. Congestion pricing was also set to fund numerous transit projects, including the extension of the Second Avenue subway. People who are relying on the project want to know what happens now. CBS 2's Masa Saidi live in East Harlem with reaction there tonight. Masa. Maurice, people here have been waiting 84 years for new subway stations. And when this project was announced, some feared that it was too good to be true. Tonight, some people tell me they feel betrayed. East Harlem has been a subway desert since 1940. Carmen Castaneda and her son live along 2nd Avenue. Carmen says the closest subway is too far and the trains and buses too crowded. Six trains very busy. Very, very busy, all the time. Usually the train sick is very full, so the queue is better to here. Construction was underway to extend service up to 125th Street. The estimated cost, more than $7 billion. The MTA had said previously, quote, future contracts rely on funding from congestion pricing. So what happens now that the plan has been halted? We remain fully committed to advancing all the improvements that New Yorkers have been promised, like the extension of the 2nd Avenue subway. In her stunning announcement, Governor Hochul promised projects would be paid for with state reserves. But advocates for commuters say the devil is in the details. Lisa Daglian with the Permanent Citizens Advisory Committee to the MTA says billions more is needed. It's over $4 billion would be paid for by congestion pricing. That money is now in jeopardy. Where's that money going to come from? What happens is with the senior citizens, they have to end up walking all the way to Lexington Avenue to get the train. But it's not so simple. While some residents love the idea of the subway, they hate congestion pricing even more. You want a subway, but not with congestion pricing? Not with that congestion pricing. No, that's not fair. And I am standing at 106th Street and 2nd Avenue. This is one of the areas that's supposed to get a new subway station. And you and Marsha said it at the top. Who knows what's going to happen next? But interesting, a business owner here tells me he's also happy the project may not move forward because he didn't want to deal with the construction. For now, we're live in East Harlem at Masa Saidi, CBS 2 News. There's always that. Masa, thank you. And we do have more coverage for you on our website. You can find reaction from environmentalists as well as more details about other transit projects that could end up getting on hold. It's all there for you at CBSNewYork.com.